Um, we've had some misfortune that way, but I think the moment we start letting our team make excuses about our injury situation is the moment we, you know, fold up the tents and go home, man. I, I just don't think that works, you know, and an opportunity for a young guy to get in there and play and grow and develop in, in live game, game time opportunities is incredibly valuable. And so I think you have a choice to look at it as a, as a negative or you cho have a choice to look at it as a positive. And yeah, there's players that we would like to have available to us week in and week out, but that's football. That's the way it goes. And so someone else has to step in and know what to do and play his butt off. And we've had some good young guys show, show some glimpses of, of what the future is going to look like. Coach, uh, last week you mentioned the importance of starting out fast, especially going on the road. Uh, you guys managed to get a touchdown um, and score before the opposing team. Uh, but after that, I mean, what did you see in that, uh, that, that possession where you guys scored your touch, uh, touchdown to go up, and then after that where it just seemed like it was just all Nevada? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think that we had a good plan going into the game, and early on we were executing at a high level. Tyler Nevins was running the heck out of the football. Um, our O-line was, was moving the ball, you know, or moving the line of scrimmage. And uh, I was really excited about what was going on there. Um, and then, uh, obviously, I thought a big turning point was the penalty on Jermaine uh, on the interception, right? Because at that point, we're still leading. It's still a good football game, and still, uh, we're, we're still in it. Um, you know, then, you know, the, you know, even if you look at it, we threw an interception in the red zone on our first drive, you know? And so, um, a lot of the times, I think you've heard me talk about it before, you know, small detail, big impact. We've had a little bit of that with some of the younger players on our team, a small detail, really having a negative impact on a play. And so, you know, those are those coaching points. Those are those teachable moments for us as a staff to try and get those guys to understand, no, you have to outside release this player or he's going to intercept this ball. <laughs> um, and so, you know, and then from there, with the 100 yard interception return where, you know, we have somebody there to make the tackle on the minus 45, but we got to make it. We got to make that tackle and, and give our team a chance to play defense. Um, so, you know, the other, you know, and then after that, then we have the pump blocked. And so the, those things just start to stack on us, you know, and then we're playing from behind and we know that our strength is running the football. And so we're, you know, going back and forth with that, with those decisions as a coaching staff, trying to put us in the best position to win. Um, so, you know, just really some frustrating stuff on Saturday. But um, I, was, I was encouraged with how we started, but we, we need to put a whole game together. We, ha we haven't done that yet. Talk about uh, coachable and uh, teachable experiences. Uh, Montel Aaron, five interceptions last two weeks, three against Nevada. Um, where's the balance, and, and if you could explain, you know, your, your, your personal thought process and, and how you balance uh, managing a quarterback's confidence level yeah. versus still getting them experience when uh, when situations like that, which are not uncommon, do, do occur? Well, I think that's really hard. It's really hard because all Montel wants is to be a good player. All he wants to do is lead this team and do the right thing and throw it to the right guy. And so in those moments where, you know, he just floated the ball, you know, in the end zone on the big interception return, he didn't step into the throw. He didn't get any of his hips into the throw. And that's a ball you need to drive. And it just floated on him. And he got hit right as he threw it. But um, you know, that's the part, that's the struggle with a freshman quarterback, you know, because, you know, he, he's not a kid that played, even played last year, right? He had that redshirt year. So he's still getting caught up with the speed of the game. He missed three and a half games because of his, his injury after, you know, when we played Utah. So those are all valuable reps he needed, that he, he continues to need. And so there's, even for us as a coaching staff, there's that balance of us, balance for us keeping him in and making him learn as he plays and making him grow and develop through some of those interceptions and some of those tough times. Um, and then also saying, OK, come here, step back. You need to watch for a minute. You need to see what's going on. So, Coach, we're going to go to the phones. Uh, Mike Rohard from the Loveland Reporter on the line. Uh, Mike, one question for Coach. Yeah, how are you doing today, Coach? I'm good. How are you? Well, I, to me, that's the only choice you have is to stay positive and keep working. And I know that sounds cliche, but, um, you know, I think, you know, in society today, it's so easy. Everybody wants to blame everybody else. Everybody wants to feel sorry for themselves when things don't go their way. 
or blame you know their misfortune on someone else and I'm just not going to let our team do that I'm not going to let our coaching staff do that I'm not going to let me do that and so um, every day we come to the to the building with a lot of energy and a lot of excitement about what we're doing here we believe in our process and the kids do too and it's hard and frustrating when you don't you know you work your tails off and you don't get the results you want but these kids are invested and they know that we are building this and they know that it's a process and there's some tough lessons in there. Last Saturday was case in point, but I believe in these kids. I love how they come to work every day and I love that they are still in it, competing their tails off till the last whistle. Coach, uh, college football isn't like the NFL or the NBA where you, you kind of, you tank and you get a prize, right? For you know being the worst team in the league. Um, you play college football to sweat, you play to bleed, you play to win, right? Uh, Kind of, there's been a ton already, but any chance we see more more freshmen being out there towards the end of the season? Gosh, I hope not. I mean, just for their sake, um, you know, I would, you know, what, you know, we played some guys in our fourth to last game, and that was kind of, you know, we still had a quarter of the season to play. So for me, I'm like, they're still going to get four games of playing, four games of opportunity to get in there and mix it up and and learn as they play, um, but. You know, not, unless something totally crazy happened, I, I don't anticipate um, any more playing. I believe we've played 23 freshmen this year, which is a very high number. Um, so, um, you know, hopefully those guys continue to grow and improve and, and, do, and do good stuff out there. Coach, back to the phones. Kelly Lyle from the Colorado is on the line as well. Kelly, one question for Coach. Uh, yeah, Coach, I just wanted to ask you in particular, when you look at this Colorado State offense, well, I, I mean, there's lots of things that stand out, you know, in a bunch of different ways. Obviously, they have, if you look across their team in their, you know, starting 22, they have three sophomores and everybody else is a senior or a junior. So they're a very mature football team. They've played a lot of football. They know what it's all about. Um, offensively, they're just insanely explosive. Um, I think Gallup's the best receiver in our conference, and he might be the best receiver on the West Coast. He's incredibly dynamic, strong, explosive, change of direction, transition breaks. I'm a wideout guy by trade, and so I'm just incredibly impressed by him. Um, their tailback is a great player. Their quarterback has been outstanding throughout his career. And then they got a senior, you know, mostly senior offensive line and a senior tight end. So they just have a really mature group that executes at a really high level. They're very well coached and they present all kinds of challenges for everyone they play. Coach, um, as far as the coaching staff is concerned, is there any like miscommunication between executing a game plan within the coaches or does it fall between the coaches and the players as well as far as executing goes? No, I mean, not that I know of. If you've heard that, you got to let me know. But um, this is a really open staff. The communication is uh, really, really clear. We don't mince words. We don't pull punches. Everyone kind of talks open and honestly with each other. I think that's a huge point of emphasis with our program, communication, communication with our staff, communication with our players, football, academics, weight room, all of it. So we work really hard at that communication. And, uh, you know, I think – the challenges we've had on, you know, execution a lot of time has just been some, some young players learning a new scheme. And, uh, you know, sometimes those young guys try too hard and they run themselves out of a gap or they run t five yards past the depth they're supposed to be just because they're trying to be full speed and they're trying to do it right. Coach, there was a point in the game uh, against Nevada, uh, down 28 uh, right before the f end of the first half. Uh, Two-minute drill has to be running through your head. You choose to run back-to-back -back, uh, run plays, um, 60 or 70-yard field. Obviously, you know, connecting big on the 44-yard pass play to Trey uh, Hartley. Right. Um, but possession ended in a fumble. Do you still have faith in this sort of this off, up-tempo offense that you guys have been, you know, kind of bringing to life since the spring? I, I do. I, I do think the tempo has changed a little bit, you know, with uh, some of the people that we've lost. And, uh, you know, where we're at as a football program, I think sometimes I have to make a decision to play a little bit more team football, play a little slower, try and run the ball a little more. You know, early on in the season when we were going fast, we were being really ineffective offensively and we were leaving our defense on the field too long and they were playing well. And so then those, those reps end up stacking on them. And, and then we have people end up getting nicked or dinged up. And, and so 
um, you, you start to change some, some of that philosophy a little bit. I also know that for a first year in any offense that goes from a huddle offense to a tempo offense is very hard. The transition is always hard because those players are used to having a 30 second break in the huddle. They're used to getting there, gathering their thoughts, hearing the play call, then going out. And so there's always, there's always some transition um, challenges when, you, when you're making that move that we've made. But I believe in what we're doing. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that don't because it hasn't looked good. I understand that. But I believe in the path we're on and the way we're coaching it. Coach, back to the phones with Mike Brohard. Mike, one more question for Coach. Come on, man. I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> really? Fair enough, but I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. But yeah, we we like the matchups outside. They're going to be battles, man. Good players on good players are fun to watch. I think. Uh, coach, uh, back enough. back to where you mentioned how you're moving in the right direction, but people m might not be seeing that. What's your message? Obviously, it's going to be a process, but when people are seeing results like this, how do you tell them that, hey, you guys got to trust the process? No, I, I agree. It's hard. It's hard. You know, um, you know, there's, you know, there has to be a little bit of faith involved in, in that process. And, you know, I believe even though the results aren't what we want, all of our players are having a really positive experience in all the other parts of their life. And they believe in the coaches and they believe in the staff and, uh, and we believe in the kids. And so, you know, I think there's, you know, this is a program that really cares about each other and you know for our fan base and for our alumni i understand it hasn't been good enough and that's on me and we are working our butts off to get it right and we will continue to do that with this team throughout the until the season's done and then when we will get on the road recruiting and we will chase the best class we can and we'll keep building it day by day as we go forward question again uh, to the phones kelly lyle one more question for coach You know, I'm not sure I can say that by position. I would just maybe say, you know, in terms of the younger generation, the guys that we that hadn't played football before or the freshmen that we brought in, I think uh, we, we feel really good about kind of what some of those guys have done. We've seen some great production from a true freshman tailback, from a retro freshman quarterback, from a retro freshman offensive tackle, um, freshman line, but true freshman linebackers, retro freshman guys in the secondary. So, you know, I think it's hard for me to say exactly what spot I've seen, you know, by position so much, but I do feel good about um, kind of the progress of those young players and their development. And they're not right all the time, but they're working hard and, and they're getting better every day. And uh, I think we're really going to like what we see as they continue to grow and develop. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think there's been a lot of growth at that quarterback position just because there was a battle. It was a four man battle kind of that carried through fall camp and it was messy and hard and challenging. And, uh, you know, now that Montel's taking the reins, you see those guys really coming together, trying to support him, trying to support the team, trying to coach and teach and on game day, what they're seeing happen in the game. So I'm, I'm encouraged by that group and their, in their progress. Last week against Nevada, you ran the ball more just because the run defense kind of suggested that that would be a good uh, route to go. Face a Colorado State defense that is pretty even in terms of rankings in the country, pass yards uh, against, run yards against. Do you change the, the thought at all? The Colorado State defense that gave up a bunch on the ground, especially with how Tyler Nevins uh, ran the ball in the first half this past week? or? Do you let Montel throw a little bit more? Well, you're always trying to find the you're always trying to find the best way to put the ball in the, your guys' hands that can make plays. You know, so you're talking about Montel and Tyler; those are two of our best guys that way. And so, obviously, we're going to want to try and get them the football. You know, but I think we've seen, you know, some of the the wideouts do some stuff. I thought Trey Hartley is is, is making some moves out there. You've seen some production from him, um, and I think 
uh, you know, anytime we can get the ball in those guys' hands, that, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, Coach, there's been uh, games this, this year where you've touched on post-game where, you know, you're impressed with the way the team close out the game, um, just sometimes putting back-to-back back to back scoring drives together. Um, you know, it's, it's late in the game. It's out of hand, but nevertheless, it's, 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 good, to, it's good to see. Uh, obviously, well, bigger picture now, um, kind of how would you like the, the ending of the season to, to close out, kind of just like a, you know, a finish strong mentality, that never quit gene? Yeah, that uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the, I mean, there's not a player or a coach in the history of college football that didn't go out to win every game they play, you know. And so for us, we know that we're playing a really, really good team in Colorado State. They're well coached. They've got great players everywhere. I mentioned their maturity. They're a well-developed program, right? You know, they got one, I think they got one sophomore, one sophomore and two juniors on their defense. Everybody else is a senior. And so those guys have seen a lot of battles. They've, they've been in, you know, in a lot of games. And so it's a great challenge for us. Um, and I think, you know, even at the end of the game, you're, you're never going to stop playing because we're so young. We need those reps. Those guys need to play in those moments. They need to understand, oh, it's third and six. I got to get it. You know, and so trying to get them as many opportunities as we can, that's what that's, I've been really encouraged with those kids and how they've kept fighting. Coach, how well do you think the guys handled the elevation in Reno? And as it gets higher in Fort Collins, uh, what do you expect to kind of be? Yeah, I didn't think the elevation was a big deal in Reno. I know it's higher in Fort Collins. This will be our fourth elevation game this season, right? We had the two Utahs and we had Reno. And so we played Colorado State. I don't know if that makes a difference, but I like to think it does. <laughs> Coach, back to the phone. This is Mike. Do you have any more questions for Coach? No, I'm good. Thanks. I appreciate it. Kelly, how about you on the phone? Any more questions for Coach? No, I'm good. Thanks. Thank you all. All right, that does it for this week's press conference. Once again, San Jose State on the road for the final time this season at Fort Collins in Colorado State. That's a 1.30 Mountain Time kickoff, 12.30 on 1590 AM KLIV in the Spartan Radio Network Pacific Time. Our coverage starts at noon. And a reminder once more on November 25th, the final game of the season, Wyoming at home inside SefQ Stadium. That game now has an announced time of 2 o'clock Pacific Time on ESPN3. That does it for us, though, this week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.